there are many examples of simple rules giving rise to complex patterns. Integer sequences are just collection of integers that follow certain rules. Fibonacci sequence is defined simply, yet it gives rise to complex patterns. This video is about a sequence I discovered not so long ago. To understand what the rule for this sequence is, let's take a non-negative integer. We've got 3518. This number has four digits. Now, there are many things we can potentially do with the digits of this number. For example, we can find the sum or product of all of them, or reverse them. Let's do something else instead. Starting from the first digit, 3, we can find how much each pair of consecutive digits differ from each other. So, 3 differs from 1 by 2. 1 differs from 5 by 4, and 5 differs from 8 by 3. We write these differences together to form a new number, 243. Let f be the function that does this to any number with two or more digits. By this I mean the function f represents the first three steps. A number goes in f and suffers through the above three steps, and out comes another number. If you want unnecessarily complex definition, here is the formal definition of f with example. We take absolute differences of adjacent digits and concatenate them. But if you understood the previous explanation, you don't need to worry. Now let's play with the function f. f of 13 and f of 24 both give 2 and are therefore equal. Now a natural question to ask is, given f of n equals 2, how many non-negative integers satisfy this equation? Let's see. There are 15 two-digit numbers that satisfy this equation. What about three-digit number solutions? Let x1, x2, x3 be a three-digit number. For it to be a solution, the first two digits, x1 and x2, must differ by zero, which means they must be equal. Since the first two digits are same, we can just repeat the first digit in every two-digit solutions to get all of the three-digit solutions. Therefore, the number of two-digit and three-digit solutions is equal. Similarly, for any k-digit solution, the first k-1 digit must be the same, and, as before the number of k-digit solutions would also be 15. Based on what we've learnt just now, what can we say about the solutions when f of n equals 12? Obviously, the solutions would be a three-digit number or bigger. Also, the number of three-digit solutions would be equal to number of four, or five, or six-digit solutions and so on. So in this case, we should only focus on the three-digit solutions, because other solutions are trivial. Now let's focus on the general case. Let f of n be equal to a k-digit number, d1, d2, all the way up to dk. This equation will play a key role in the definition of the sequence I discovered, and as we have learnt, we will only focus on its k plus one-digit solutions. Let's go back to the equation f of n equals 2 and focus on its two-digit solutions. Let's take one of the solutions, 13. We can represent it visually like this. Now if we add 1 to both digits of 13, we get 24, which is also a solution. Visually, it's like moving to the right, and we can keep doing this. So we can generate many solutions from a single solution. And we can also subtract one from each digit to get other solutions. We can also subtract the digits itself from a fixed number. For example, let's subtract each digit of 13 from 7. We get 64, which is also a solution. But this time, how do we visualize this operation? It turns out, this can be visualized as flipping the 13 around 3.5, which is half of 7. This operation pairs one solution with its flipped version. But, using 7, we can't perform this operation on solutions like 86 or 97. So from now on, we will use 9, the only number that gives the least error for all digits. As you can see, this operation pairs 14 out of the 15 solutions, except the 97, which would give 0 too, but do we consider it a solution or not?
02 isn't a two-digit number, so it can't be a solution. But what if we change our definition so that numbers like 02 are also considered two-digit solutions? Then, in this case, we would be able to pair each solution with another solution, making the number of solutions equal to 16, an even number. It's even because solutions come in pairs. The symmetry is obvious if we arrange the solutions in ascending order. The first half of the solutions pairs symmetrically with the other half. And this symmetry isn't just present in solutions of this specific equation. In solutions of every possible equation, we find the exact symmetry. The reason for this beautiful symmetry is the change we made earlier. But what if we change our definition so that numbers like 0, 2 are also considered two-digit solutions? Now, let's understand the sequence. We will denote the mth term of the sequence by a, m. If m is a k-digit number, then a, m is equal to the number of k plus one-digit solutions of the equation fn equals to m. So a0 is 10, because fn equals 0 has 10 two-digit solutions. Similarly, we find that a1 is 18, a2 is 16, a3 is 14, and so on up to a9, which is 2. Let's write these terms like this. Notice that if we pair terms like this, each pair sums to 20, which is twice the value of a0. This symmetry is similar to the previous one, but for very different reasons. Let's see more examples. This symmetry is true for 10 consecutive terms arranged like this, when index of first term is multiple of 10. If you want to prove the theorem that explains this symmetry, here it is. We know that AM is always even, but what if we divide each term by 2? Then we would get two types of terms, one which stays even, the other which turns into an odd number. Let's see. Let's highlight terms that remained even. This isn't very interesting, so let's arrange the first 100 terms in a 10 by 10 grid and highlight terms which remains even. Now this is quite interesting. Why did we get this pattern? Firstly, the vertical symmetry is due to the earlier theorem. However, why we get this specific pattern for terms in this range is due to much deeper reasons which I will explain in the next video. Let's look at the patterns we get for terms in different ranges. These patterns are really interesting. If it was any other sequence, the patterns would be very boring. Let's go bigger. What would the pattern look like if we did this to the first 10,000 terms? The first time I saw this, my mind was blown. As far as I know, this is the only sequence with such interesting patterns and symmetries when arranged in this way. However, there's still a lot of things left to share about this sequence, which I will do in future videos. That's it for today. Next videos would include the following topics.